On the evening of April 9, 2021, 45-year-old Daniel Halseth was found dead in the garage of his Nevada apartment. But we'll talk about that later on. Let's start by discussing Daniel for a moment. He was born in Estacada, Oregon. He came from a long line of Oregonians, and his family was some of the state's early settlers. Daniel earned a bachelor's degree in music at Western Oregon University, and his nickname in college was Drummer Dan. But apart from music, he also received a business degree from Corbin University in Salem. The man was actually fairly active on social media, and upon posting constantly, he managed to gather over 20,000 followers on Instagram. On the social media platform, he described himself as an entrepreneur, but his content revealed that he had other interests as well. The majority of his posts on Instagram were pictures that he took while he was traveling. He captured landscapes, sunsets, and everything pleasing to the eye when you open Instagram and start scrolling. According to his aunt, Daniel was an extremely talented photographer, and he even dabbled in music. Seems like a guy who was good at everything if you ask us. The last picture he posted was taken from a plane, capturing Las Vegas from a bird's eye view. From the images, he appeared to be returning to LAX after a trip that he took. It seemed that he went to Providence, Rhode Island, Oakland, California, Boston, Massachusetts, taking pictures of historical monuments and tourist attractions from each of these states. This last post that he uploaded, the one from the plane, went live on his Instagram just two days before the police found his almost cremated body in his garage. Apart from Instagram, Dan also had a YouTube page where he would post videos of hiking through the woods in the Bay Area. He liked spending time in nature and tried to do that with his daughter, Sierra. She was into it at first, but as she got older, well, her priorities changed, and you'll find out soon enough. Daniel had also been married to a woman named Elizabeth, who was the youngest woman to be elected to the Nevada State Senate. This happened in 2010, when she was only 27 years old. She and Daniel had gotten married in March 2001, and they got divorced 10 years later, in 2011, after having three children together, each older than the other by one year, Sierra being the youngest. On the day of his death, Daniel's mother had been trying to get a hold of him. Actually, the desperate woman tried to talk to her son for over two days, but couldn't reach him. It was unusual for the two not to talk on a daily basis, being very close and having a great relationship with one another. Knowing this was not typically an action done by Daniel, his mother then called Sierra, the 16-year-old who told her grandmother that her father's phone was broken. By 10 a.m. the next day, there was still no word from Halseth. His mother again called Sierra, demanding to speak to Daniel but the girl claimed he was in the shower. When her grandmother threatened to call the police, Sierra hung up. Less than 20 minutes later, surveillance footage captured a Nissan Altima matching the description of Daniel Halseth's car leaving the area, records show. She then called his landlord, telling her that she couldn't get a hold of her son. The landlord informed his mother that she won't be able to go right away, as she had some business to take care of but promised that right after she sorted out her affairs, she will go and check on Daniel. And that's exactly what she did. After a couple of hours, the woman, accompanied by a friend, went to Daniel's house to check on him. Flames startled the two, so they called the fire department. It seemed that the place was on fire. The authorities quickly arrived and put out the fire, but after doing so, they discovered something gruesome. The firemen didn't believe their eyes after the flames were put out. What should have been a routine call about a small house fire turned into something completely different and much more severe. There's a dead body in the garage. We just found him with the homeowner that doesn't listen. Okay, and you're in there right now? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. The almost cremated body of Daniel Halseth was found in the garage. Then they called the police. Investigations immediately began, trying to find the cause of death. While searching the home, police found several things that would shed some light on the murder of Daniel Halseth. The officers stumbled upon a bottle of lighter fluid, a chainsaw, a circular saw, and a handsaw. But that wasn't everything they saw. These apparently had blood on them, as well as human tissue between the teeth of the handsaw. It was clear that they had been used, with no success, to try and dismember Daniel. Also, two pocket knives were found, and a package of extra blades. It appeared that the knives and the spare blades also had blood on them at one point, but they've been cleaned off. 
Police stated that an extensive operation of trying to get rid of any evidence and any bloodstains had taken place, right where they found the pocket knife. Daniel Halseth died from multiple stab wounds to his chest and neck and back. After the failed attempt to dismember the body and maybe scatter it all over the place so it would be harder to find, the murderer decided that it would be better to start a fire in the house. By doing so, the murder would be covered and no traces could be linked back to him. It was also a strong odor of lighter fluid throughout the house and a large burned area that was found in the living room with some blood nearby. But what happened exactly? Who would murder such a nice and talented man who apparently was loved by everyone? Well, almost everyone. And how does this have anything to do with the teens mentioned earlier? Grab your cup of coffee and maybe some snacks, because this is going to be a wild ride. The setting for our narrative is Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh yes, the place where you go to escape monotony. The place where you feel like you've broken free from the chains of society. Where you can have fun and no one bats an eye. Fun fact, did you know that over 41 million people visit Las Vegas each year? Now that's what we call a popular destination. This city is not about just having fun. Horrible things happen here too, just like what happened to Daniel Halseth. It all started with the relationship between Aaron Guerrero, who was 18 at the time, and Sierra Halseth. Yes, Daniel's 16-year-old daughter. The couple was madly in love. And that's the right word, mad, if you're going to commit such a gruesome act. The two were suffering some major challenges in their relationship. According to Aaron's mother, they started dating in June 2020. The two didn't see their future without each other. They were convinced that they would spend the rest of their lives together, and they would do anything to not let anyone break them up. Aaron's parents informed the cops that their son and Sierra planned on running away together. Aaron allegedly told his parents that the pair had decided on Los Angeles as their destination. Of course, when your kid tells you that he's going to run away with his underage girlfriend, you're not really on board with this idea. His parents, understandably concerned about their son's intentions, contacted the parents of his 16-year-old girlfriend. Both families came to an agreement that the two should no longer communicate with one another. They thought it was best for both of their kids to take a break and figure out things on their own. Of course, this was exactly what Aaron and Sierra didn't want. And that's the moment when they started scheming and thinking of ways of staying together, despite their parents' desires. According to Aaron's parents, after hearing he would not be allowed to see Sierra ever again, he started arguing with them on a daily basis. He was outraged by their decision and threatened them by saying that he would run away from home. The Guerreros were shocked after hearing those words come out of their child's mouth. But his parents weren't the only ones struggling after taking the decision to keep the teens apart. According to the ex-wife of Daniel Halseth, he too was having difficulties with his daughter. Seemingly, the two got along great, but after Aaron stepped into the picture, his little girl started to change. She didn't care about anything anymore, and she would only think of her boyfriend. You can say that she was madly in love. So the issues between the father and daughter appeared to have been focused around the relationship with Aaron. Lieutenant Ray Spencer confirmed that Hall said that told his teenage daughter that he did not want her to date Aaron. Based on a post Sierra made on her Instagram on March 15, 2021, it seemed to be the lyrics from a song by Dean Lewis, and that song is called Be Alright. The song lyrics reflect the way the teenage girl felt when she was forbidden to see her boyfriend. Sierra felt like she had a broken heart and that her world was crumbling. We all know how that feels. On March 21st, Daniel posted a few pictures of Sierra on Facebook, and he wrote that he loves her so much and that together they would get over everything. In the month of April of 2021, Daniel seemed to be posting more pictures and videos from when his children were younger, and he seems to be reminiscing on simpler times. And it's understandable, especially if during that time he was butting heads with Sierra over the boyfriend thing, and she was mad at him for stopping her from seeing Aaron. Little did she know, as any concerned father would, everything he did was to protect her. He knew it was in her best interest to spend some time only with family. Here we are, little Sierra Bob. Nice to see you. Hi. Hi. And she's got her pink towel. She just got out of the shower. 
And I'm saying hi. And there's Jordan. And he's saying hi. Hi, Jordan. Yay. And the kids have been talking about it. <laughs> By posting that content, he basically tried to speak his daughter's language. He said that he loves her and that he's there for her by sharing videos of her when she was little. Videos of both of them having a blast. The total opposite of what was happening then when she was furious with him. The teens, unable to reconcile with their family's decision that they should be kept apart, are alleged to have taken matters into their own hands. The two, Aaron and Sierra, who were already dating for several months, started to make plans. Of course, they weren't just going to sit around letting their parents command how they live their lives. They figured out that in order to run away from home and be together, they would need some money. And the first thing that came to their heads was to rob their parents and flee to Los Angeles before their families figured out what happened. These plans do put an interesting spin on the story and shines a light on the possible motive in Daniel's murder. On April 9th, Aaron killed the father of his girlfriend in cold blood. She allegedly helped him. There's no information as to what exactly happened. Upon further investigation, Daniel suffered multiple wounds. He was been stabbed about 70 times, stuffed into a sleeping bag, and set on fire. His body was found almost completely burned. There's footage dated to the night Daniel got killed, which shows the couple driving away from Halseth's house in her father's car. Detectives also reviewed footage from the surveillance camera of a hardware store, where they saw Aaron purchasing a saw, lighter fluid, and plastic gloves. But the girl didn't stand by idly. Oh no. Sierra was also seen on surveillance footage, buying bleach from a grocery store, so that they could clean any evidence that would point to them. Additionally, Daniel's ex-wife, who claimed that they had remained friends after they divorced, said that they still shared a bank account that they apparently used to pay off mutual debts or mutual bills. She noticed some strange withdrawals from their joint bank account on April 8th. They totaled to a little bit over $1,300, and the woman had tried to call Daniel, but she was unable to get in contact with him most likely because at this point, he was already dead. Both Aaron and Sierra were arrested in Salt Lake City, Utah, just a few days later after fleeing the state. They had enough money to travel after using her father's credit card, but fortunately, the police were already on their trail. Police officers in Utah had come in contact with Aaron and Sierra while they were riding on a train that pulled into the 900 South Station. When Aaron was asked to show his ticket, he admitted that he didn't have one. So the police ran a background check and it was discovered that Aaron and his 16-year-old companion Sierra were wanted on a full extradition warrant out of Las Vegas. Even though the two tried to cover their tracks, they left behind enough evidence for the police to be suspicious of the two. By following several clues like receipts and surveillance tapes, police soon found one particular piece of evidence that would convict the two teenagers. After being taken into custody, the officers went through the couple's phone and what they stumbled upon really was the nail in the coffin needed to tie up all the loose ends when it comes to the murder of Daniel Halseth. The officers found a video of the two kids, Aaron and Sierra, on the bed, recorded three days after her father was murdered. The video is so disturbing, but not because it presents some gruesome images. Oh no. It's so terrifying when taking into consideration the things they said and how exactly they did it, without any remorse whatsoever. But let's talk about what actually went on. The video starts, as mentioned before, with the two teenagers cuddling. They seem like they don't have a care in the world. Then Aaron speaks, saying that he welcomes the viewers to their YouTube channel. A joke, nonetheless. But then, things take a dark turn. With a smile on his face, and without any remorse for what he has done, Aaron states that it's three days after murdering somebody, without mentioning any names. Sierra starts laughing, and even feels a little bit embarrassed. She told him not to put that on camera but it was too late. The phone already recorded what he said, and little did they know, that information will be used against them. The next thing that could be heard is Aaron saying that it was worth it before proceeding to kiss his girlfriend on the forehead. The two looked happy about what happened. The boy then mimics choking Sierra, putting his hand around her neck, and finally, he gives her some soft slaps across the face. It may seem like playful behavior, but it's clear that underneath all that supposed love that he shows, he is willing to hurt even his 16-year-old girlfriend if he thinks that the situation calls for it. The two teenagers also mentioned that they had a lot of sex during those days, saying that they deserved it after what they just accomplished. From this information, some might believe that the two really thought of themselves as doing the right thing, murdering a man in cold blood so that they could be together. But not just any man, the father of the girl. Sierra seems more than pleased with the situation, 
maybe not realizing what had happened. <laughs> Welcome back to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Day three after <laughs> May or something. Whoa! Don't put that on the camera. It was worth it. Um, and we had sex a lot today. Mm hmm. It was worth it. We had plenty of sex. I was paying them for doing it. <laughs> and no, no bleeding this time. Mm hmm. We got, we got through that. We, we, we overcame. <laughs> this is pretty horrific, because the implication here is that Sierra helped her boyfriend brutally murder her father, for the most trivial reason. The two kids were not allowed to be together, and that was enough for them to take a life in cold blood. Of course, as an adult, you see things differently. You think that this reason is simply idiotic. If you were a parent of a teenage daughter, and you found out that she and her boyfriend are planning to rob you and then run off together, you might think that the relationship was a bad influence. The motive also appears to have something to do with money, not just the fact that they couldn't be together. Considering the withdrawals made from Daniel's bank account, and the fact that the initial plan even before his murder had involved robbing her dad to fund this trip to LA, it seems that the killing was not planned from the beginning. Their main concern was to find money so that they could flee. It's not known for how long Sierra and Aaron were planning this, but due to the surveillance footage of them buying supplies for the murder, there is evidence that it was premeditated. Alongside murder charges, the teenagers also faced charges of conspiracy, arson, robbery, and fraudulent use of a credit card, and are being held without bail. Legal representatives for both defendants have yet to comment on the allegations. Prosecutors are considering whether to seek the death penalty against Aaron Guerrero, and since Sierra is a minor, she cannot be convicted to the death penalty. Nevertheless, she will be charged as an adult. This case really turned our stomach. To think that your own daughter could resort to such actions, just because her father was trying to protect her from the bad influence that Aaron had on her. After his death, an online obituary announced the news. It was noted that he died suddenly, without any mention of the way he passed. The online publication didn't want to add brutal murder next to his name, and that's understandable. Alongside the mentioned death, it was written that Daniel had a huge, sincere smile that would extend from cheek to cheek. Also, the information that he loved helping people was added, next to the fact that he lived by the motto, always stop and smell the roses. The last line of his obituary said that he would be remembered through his two loving children. Sierra, the third child who murdered him, was not mentioned. But that wasn't the first time Daniel made the news, if we can say so. In October 2011, right after his first divorce, he was charged with misdemeanor counts of coercion and battery. Daniel was sentenced to six months probation and anger management classes. It seemed that he wanted to get the attention of his recent ex-wife. Nonetheless, after that sentence, he changed his life. He went to anger management, and he turned a new leaf. That's why after that incident, he and his ex-wife remained good friends and even shared a joint bank account. We must remember that parents would do anything to protect their children, and they must be respected and loved. Of course, that's not always the case. Here on Fear Files, we talked about different cases that would put parents in a bad light. Cases in which mothers would kill their children for the most trivial reasons. If you haven't seen those videos, we'll leave a link in the description, or you can just browse through our collection. So, this was the case of Daniel Halseth, murdered by Aaron Guerrero and his own 16-year-old daughter, Sierra Halseth all because he didn't think they were good together. If you found this story compelling, don't forget to like the video, comment down below your take on it, and subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that notification bell in order to stay up to date each time we reveal a new shocking case. And until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled. You never know what's lurking in the shadows.